giant seal has had quite the adventure in the Victorian town of oh, Port Lonsdale. Wow. Much to the surprise of locals, the massive marine mammal called Henry, of course. as you do, caused quite the stir, <laughs> slipping into a service station and taking up a car spot or two. Yeah. Police and Wildlife Victoria eventually helping him find his way back to the ocean. Have you had the munchies? <laughs> he looks like he's had a good snack or two. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him go. Go, Henry. Oh, good pretty quickly. Good stuff. <laughs> All right, moving on. Residents in a Victorian beachside town of Point Lonsdale were in for a shock this week when a giant seal ran amok. A Lavinia. This is incredible, right here in Melbourne. What Isn't would you do if, if that seal rocked up to your local servo? What, what would I do? Being yeah. a news girl, I would whip out my phone <laughs> like everyone else. Landscape, 30 second degrees, 30 seconds long. Don't move the camera too much. That's what we want in news for everyone out there who sees Henry the seal on the loose. He's he, beautiful. He's a big fella, isn't he, David? Yeah, look, I'd let that big bad boy uh, have right away. I tell you what, if he came into my survey, he can take control. And, and to the police who got him back, I mean, how do you how do you move an animal animal that big back into where you want him to? That fellow is a is a large boy, and uh, it's it's still great. But that's just, that's the beauty of this country, where the fauna uh, can can interact so closely with the people in a safe way. He maybe just wanted a bubble oh, Bill. What do you think? Yeah, with a little dimmy chaser. He's a big boy. <laughs> him Henry. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> some, some promising news for Australian households this morning with energy price relief set to be on its way sooner than expected. New data revealing electricity prices are forecast to drop between 29 and 44 percent. Let's bring in today's talkers, Nationals leader David Littleproud from Ryford in Queensland and Nine presenter Lavinia Nixon here with us at the Australian Open. Good morning to both of you. Hello. Uh, to you first, Lavinia. Everyone's feeling a pinch. You know, these prices just keep going up and up. So finally, can we breathe a sigh of relief? Well, maybe not just yet. I mean, we have to temper that with a little bit. It's great that the prices might come down, but let's keep in mind it's not until 2024. So we've got a long year ahead. We've got a long year ahead. And also I'm really dreading the RBA getting together for their little powwow in February because every time they get together, it's like a gut punch for Aussies. Yeah, you kind of brace yourself, don't you? <laughs> Absolutely. So the cost of living's through the roof. It seems like there is some light at the end of the tunnel, but it's a long tunnel. Yeah, so this winter I think I'll be telling the kids to make sure they put on jumpers and other Get that hoodie on now! <laughs> put on the hoodie! Uh, David, do you have an hoodie? Uh, you probably no, don't even no, know what it is. Just the straight old PJs for me. <laughs> I'm not that old. Uh, no, no, uh, I'm pretty well straight the old PJs. But, you know, this is it's, it's a long time coming, isn't it? Oh, yeah, look, um, you've got to, I hope it's generally true, but you've got to put this into perspective. What this has been driven by is that international prices are genuinely coming down uh, since Putin crossed the border into Ukraine. So what's happening is Europe sorted themselves out in how to get supply, but also it's been a milder winter in the Northern Hemisphere, which has also eased the pressure on demand. So this is a good thing. It was always going to happen once international markets sorted themselves out. But what we are concerned about is that we're not continuing to increase in supply. For renewables to work, they need firming. Uh, and when you send investment signals to companies to invest well, like price caps, what they do is they stop investing. And in fact, just about 200 kilometres from where I'm sitting today, there's a billion dollar project that has been put on hold by Senex because they don't have confidence to, to make that investment to put more supply in. And you've got to understand we're drawing down on our gas reserves every year and so if we don't add to them it means the supply goes down and our price stays up. So this is, uh, this is where it's not necessarily the price cap, it's international factors but what this price cap has done is may, may, may have caused some long term damage so it's important that we give that investment confidence to our energy companies to continue to invest because the only way to get price down is to increase supply. Yeah, well, we've still got a long way to wait to 2024, as Lavinia said. Uh, On to another story. Instagram is set to introduce a new feature. It is called Quiet Mode and allows users to let their followers know when they're unavailable for a certain period. Lavinia, doesn't it just sound like a dream come true? No, it sounds like another thing to do. Really? Like, <laughs> what, have you, to press that button? Yeah, or? if you don't want to post or you're inactive, whatever the term is, just, just don't, don't use post. it. <laughs> <laughs> There's enough to do in life. I don't need 
need to tell people I'm unavailable. They would just assume that because you're not posting. It's just illogical to me. Well, it's a bit like there's, there's a little green light that comes on when people are online. So I guess it's just that, you know, do not disturb. Uh, David, do you think that they should introduce this feature, you know, in real life too? Can we all just have that I'm not available sign yeah. that goes up? Yeah, I'm with, I'm with Lavinia. I think we just got to learn to, to switch off again. Let's use some common sense and get out of this thing. Social media is going to kill this country. We're, we're just looking at our phones and our devices all the time. Instead of engaging with one another, um, yes, it's got some, some uh, purpose, but really, uh, yeah, this is just another thing. It's good, hopefully, for parents to be able to con contain some teenagers, but reality is let's take some personal responsibility and switch off and talk to one another. Tell you what, though, as a parent, it sounds like a dream come true. Surely you can just take their phone and put it on not available. What do you reckon? I, I think they know yeah. how to make it and that's a big question. <laughs> I had to burst that little <laughs> bubble you got going on there, Belinda, but they figured that, that one out. It's not that easy. <laughs> David, would you use that one for your kids? Yeah, well, I think the big question is when do you let your kids get into social media? I mean, my yeah. two youngest boys are still too young. And, you know, that's, I think that's a big question as adults that we, we really need to, to put some meat on the bone and get comfortable because there is, there is a, a lot of harm on these social media uh, platforms and I think it's important as parents you, you take a very precautionary approach to it. So from my perspective, yeah, I think it's a great, it's a great vehicle that may help some parents, but let's be honest, I think uh, we need to make sure we, uh, we pick the right age and the of our kids before we let them on it. Yeah, use Absolutely. those restrictions. And social skills, you know, making eye contact and talking with adults. And, and we practice it with our children. We call it talking tennis. You know, if, a, if an adult asks you a question, don't just say yes or no. You have to give back some information to keep that conversation going. And that's a life skill, and you've got to teach your kids that. And no phones at the dinner table? My kids don't even have phones. Oh, wow. <laughs> I know. My, my poor boy, Henry, he's 13. He's one of only two kids in his class that doesn't have a phone. I say, great, you're special, mate. You're different to everyone else. <laughs> How long is that going to last? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> we have to have that conversation. <laughs> hey there, Today fans. Sarah and... What's my name again? Oh my God. <laughs> Carl. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube <laughs> channel, though. Subscribe now for more news, special reports and amazing Aussie stories. And Carl misbehaving, Whoa, of course. That never happens. Always happens. What's she talking about?